Hello, I'm Armin Budish. Welcome to Golden Opportunities. Today, if pensions are passe, where should you retire your funds now? We'll point out possibilities. Then, how to see movies on the big screen, but spend a minimum amount of money. Then, has the real estate market really turned the corner? We'll take a walk around the block to find out. Plus, making a move is monumental. We'll unpack helpful advice. And the states just made it harder to protect your assets. It's time to get GOing, so pull up a chair and join us at our kitchen table for Golden Opportunities. Pensions are becoming a thing of the past, so if you've been passed over for a pension, how do you plan to make up that money? Certified financial planner Jim Lineweaver is here to present a possible plan to manage your retirement. Thanks for joining us, Jim. Thanks for having me. All right, so one of the nice things about the, that good old-fashioned pension was knowing that you had this steady uh, uh, income coming in monthly or, 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 or uh, regularly to supplement your Social Security. Not many people can depend on that today, though. No, they can't. As a matter of fact, the private sector has seen these pension plans shrink dramatic, dramatically. Ever since 1980, there was about 148,000 pension plans across the country. That has shrunk all the way down to about 48,000. So we've lost wow. 100,000 pension plans inside you know, the United States in the private sector. However, what ends up occurring is that even though that's only covering about 20 percent of the workforce now in the private sector, these pensions make up almost 80 percent of the pensions for public service like state teachers retirement and Ohio PERS and police and fire. So in that side of the coin it's very rampant and these things are still very important. What, what's happened to our pensions? Well what happened is a lot of companies especially on the private sector side are feeling that you know they want to take off that liability initiate a 401k and put more of that responsibility on the employees so they control their own destiny. So maybe the benefits are a little less and that's what attracts people to the public sector because at least in the past these benefits have been very strong but they're starting to weak. We can. Even, even the public sector uh, pensions have changed though over time. They really have. What ends up happening is um, you're actually having to work a lot longer for the same benefits and those are going to continue to be squeezed more and more down the road. But some options offer, you know, we talked a couple weeks ago about the partial lump sum option payment for teachers. Uh, police and firemen have some different options. So there's different things you can take advantage of out there, but you really got to be careful. So what should we do if our pension, you know, maybe we're in private business and we don't even have a pension. I mean, what, what, do we, what can we start doing to protect ourselves? Well, what you want to do is try to max out all your retirement plans and put as much money away as you can. If you are fortunate enough to have some of these pension plans, what you can try to do is look at an option where you have to try to create your own pension or your own income stream. And there's a lot of things that you can look at out there like dividend producing instruments. That may be some from some very conservative mutual funds to these exchange traded funds that have popped up recently. And even it could be fixed income instruments like bonds and things. As a matter of fact, there's some annuities out there too. So there's a wide variety of instrument people can use and if they study them properly, they can generate that good income like they, maybe their forefathers had from those old pension days. But now you have to do it on your own. You have to do it through your 401k or your 403b or these other uh, options that the government gives us today. You do. And the key is one thing, that's accumulation. So you want to try to put as much money as you, wave, you can pre-tax so that you get the biggest lump sum available. But then after that fact, it becomes about income. And how do you never outlive your income? Because that's the mm -hmm. biggest fear for people in retirement today. It's a real fear. It's huge. And that's why a lot of people have created, a lot of companies have created ways to generate a very good income stream so that you can kind of sleep well at night. Thank you very much, Jim. Appreciate your information. Are you worried about your retirement income? <laughs> you Maybe you should be. Talk to a professional to explore your options. Give Jim a call. His number's up next. To find out more, call the Line Weaver Financial Group at 1-888-313-4009 or log on to www.lineweaver.net. Next, bringing movies back to the big screen. But first, a hair-raising question. 
what did our founding fathers focus on to keep the wigs they wore white? We'll comb through the facts and return with a stylish answer. Welcome to Breckenridge Village, a continuing care retirement community conveniently located in historic Willoughby, Ohio. Whether it's a luxury apartment, a spacious ranch home, or newly built brownstones, it's all here. With the added security of knowing more care is available when you need it. Breckenridge Village offers an exciting and upbeat lifestyle, and the food is fabulous, and our staff makes you their number one priority. Learn more about Breckenridge Village and come see our new Veal Wellness and Aquatic Center. To convert their wig color to white, our forefathers had to take a powder with ground rice, which they planted on their pompadours. Remember seeing movies on the big screen, and I mean the big screen. They seemed about a story high and a football field wide. That was the ticket. Well, now for a short time, that's the way you can see them again. Settle in with your popcorn, because Gina Ver Vernace is here to reel off the details. Gina is Vice President of Theatricals for Playhouse Square. Thanks for joining us today, Gina. Well, it's a pleasure to be here because we're so excited to have uh, this, this uh, series at the theaters. This is the 14th annual Cinema on the Square. It's sponsored by Fifth Third Bank, and it is delivering an experience to audiences in Cleveland that you just aren't going to be able to find anywhere. These big it's screens, really special. They're, they're not around anymore. No, they're not. You know, on this scale, you know, the, the screen, it's a famous screen actually at the Palace Theater. It's a Hurley Super Glow screen, and it's 47 feet wide. Imagine that. F you know, you couldn't put that in your basement, right, and watch television. Uh, well, not in my basement, but. <laughs> <laughs> now, review for us some of the films that you'll be showing on this gigantic screen. Great. Well, we have 16 films in all, and we'll start with the 800-pound gorilla, which is King Kong, oh, with you know the most famous damsel in distress, of course, is, is Fay Ray. And that's followed by other classics, such as The Grapes of Wrath, oh. mm -hmm. 42nd Street. And then we're going to have a free showing. Uh, well, there's also Grand Hotel. And we do have a free showing of Elvis Presley's famous Jailhouse Rock. That's Great. on August the 11th. Great. And anything special for baby boomers to put on their list? Absolutely. You know, we're showing The Big Chill. And that soundtrack, actually, was just such a fabulous soundtrack of all those Motown classics. So The Big Chill will be here and also Jaws, mm -hmm. you know, uh, with... Um, you know, Roy Scheider and right. Richard Dreyfuss. And, you know, that was like one of the famous films. I think one of the top grossing films of all time. And I understand Jaws. you're going to have Superman? Yes. Now, we have actually this series that we're calling Superhero Sunday. And it's going okay. to include Superman with Christopher Reeves, Spider-Man, and a double feature with Batman and Batman Returns. Great. And in addition for the family, we also have Muppet Treasure Island, which is always a hit. That's great. And... Uh, other big names that people can come to see, maybe some of the names that some of our viewers will remember. Oh, huge names. Rex Harrison, Richard Great. Burton, Elizabeth Taylor, they're all in Cleopatra, you know, that epic film that almost bankrupt the studio. <laughs> and we have Henry Fonda, his daughter Jane Fonda, and Catherine Hepburn in On Golden Pond. Great. And Audrey Hepburn actually is going to be there in, in Charade. So it's a, a wonderful lineup of films. Now there's more to see when you go to the palace than just the films, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, when you walk into the theaters, you will hear and almost feel the Kimball organ. The mighty Kimball organ is a timber rattling sound that if you've never heard it, you really have to experience that. It's been lovingly restored and played by volunteers over the years. Every film will begin with a classic cartoon and then the full featured film. But I will also tell you, I judge my movie theaters by popcorn. Yeah. And you will, the popcorn is, it's pop fresh daily. You'll smell it, you'll see it. And uh, it's, it's a wonderful evening out. You right. know, it's, it's only $5. Uh, yeah, okay. it, it's, it's, it's $5. Dollars, four dollars for senior citizens, and it's just—it's a night like it should be. You know, seeing a film on that size screen in the opulence of the Palace Theater is an experience like you can't get anywhere. And it is seeing a film with a couple hundred people—it just it's makes it a totally different experience. It with three or four people in your, right, in your house, right? Right, exactly. Well, thank you very much. This is great information. It sounds like a wonderful opportunity. It's thank a great you. opportunity. Thanks for being there. So, with those prices in these films. Cinema at the Square is just the ticket for a summer movie night. To find the complete movie listing, use the information that's coming up next. My thanks to Gina for ushering us through a festival of films, and I think I'll have a little popcorn. For tickets, 
call the Playhouse Square box office at 216-241-6000 or click to www.playhousesquare.org. Next, is the grass really greener for the housing market? Looking for places to go, things to do? Welcome to our community calendar. University Circle has cooked up a unique way to salute our veterans with a community festival and rib cook-off. This tasty salute takes place Saturday, August 6th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Enjoy entertainment and fabulous food at the intersection of East 108th Street and Magnolia Drive. For a menu of information, call 216-791-3900 or get cooking by clicking to www.universitycircle.org. Summer's peak season for tomatoes, peaches, and home selling. But given today's economy, are homes withering on the vine or ripe for the picking? We have farmed out this question to Rachel Torchia, and she's here to sprout the selling statistics. Rachel's with Gateway Title. Thanks for joining us, Rachel. Hi, Armin. How are you? <laughs> Great. So we're halfway through 2011. How's the housing market? Well, you know, it has changed a lot from five years ago, very drastically changed. But what we're noticing in a positive way is there are small drastic changes this year so far. Um, up or down? A little bit up. Great. It's not great big, but it's a little bit up. So I kind of think that the consumers have bottomed the market up and now it's going to start. You know. Now, are houses selling better because the market's improving or because the sellers are adjusting their prices downward? It's seller mentality. Uh, people who have been trying to sell for years and years have finally come to the conclusion that it's not going to get better tomorrow and are adjusting that, their prices to that. Actually, it's not supposed to really start getting better till like 2015, wow. but it's inching up. Now, all those real estate agents must be happier that things are picking up at least. Well, my husband's a real estate agent. He's I a broker, know, so he's true. happy. Uh, actually, <laughs> <laughs> what, what I, I get it from both sides, you know, the real estate side, the title side. Mm -hmm. But what he's seeing and what I'm watching with his business is he's had more calls for listings in the last six weeks than he has since January. Wow. And he's going out and he's giving them prices and he's telling them what it's worth and they're agreeing. Great. There's a whole big difference. You have to so a lot of it's mentality. Oh, totally, totally. They're very careful. They want to see a lot of st statistics on prices and everything, but then they don't start arguing that there's the only house in the neighborhood that's it's, worth more. Uh, I understand. Now, you've talked about the real estate agent side. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, what about the title side? Oh, what do you see in there? Yeah, that's my game. Uh, what I'm seeing is the same kind of an increase, but I am seeing an increase in the number of for sale by owners who are succeeding. Um, that's different. I mean, they're really going at it, sticking to it. People look for, for sale by owner. I assume it's price driven that, you know, if, if a seller has to drop their price, they're trying to save money where they can't. Well, buyers are looking for for sale by owners so they can save the commission. Uh -huh. uh, sellers are looking to sell by owners so they can save commission. You know, they say they can't save the same commission, but somewhere they're doing it. They're splitting this out and it's working. Got it. Got it. Got it. So, um, is there an urgency right now on the seller's part uh, in these types of sales? Well, there's a couple types of sales we actually work with. One of them, it, it, about 50% of our market, there is not an urgency because a lot of times it's a family home, downsizing, there's no mortgage, it's not a short sale, uh, maybe it's part of uh, probate or something like that the heirs are selling. So they want, they'll take their time and sell to get the most money possible. Uh, the others are just sellers who figure, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it myself, and you know, I need to get out of this. Now, we all know buying a home, selling a home, uh, it's complicated, and there's a lot of uh, things that people should understand. If they don't use a real estate agent in particular, who you know, often can walk them through, yeah. Where do people go for help? Well, there's an order on which things should be done. Uh, a lot of uh, buy owners just set out and go to the bank and say, I'm buying a house, give me a mortgage. They, have, they don't have a purchase agreement, they have nothing. What we want them to know is that's what we specialize in. And banks, a lot of times, will have those people call us because I have all the paperwork that they need. But I can explain to them what it is. We walk them through it so they understand the transaction. That's our specialty. They can order a kit. They can call us on the phone, they can come to a class. 
we do a lot of consultation on the phone. Uh, we just really, really tell them from beginning to end what's involved in a real estate transaction. And I appreciate that, uh, that because you do provide a lot of good information for people uh, who need it. Thank you for that, Rachel. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sure. So if you're planning to buy or sell a home, why not cultivate a relationship with a pro? You'll reap the benefits. Give Rachel Torch a call. You can ask for her kit, for a class, for additional information. Her number's up next. For more information, call Gateway Title at 1-800-357-0567 or click to www.gatewaytitle.com. Next, moving right along. It's time to get up and go. An exercise minute on golden opportunities. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Harbin from Breakout Fitness and today we're going to do a back extension to work our lower back and to help with our, our back posture. All right, Armand, you ready to go? I don't know. <laughs> I think you are. We got our mats here. What we're going to do is we're going to lay on our bellies. We're going to let our palms lay to our side. Great job, palms up. Let the front of your shoulders rest on the mat. Beautiful. Now all we're going to do, pull the front of the shoulders off, keeping the lower half on the ground. Beautiful. Let it drop back down. Touch the front of the shoulders. And let's come right back up as high as your posture will let you. Beautiful. All right. Do one of these a month? No, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna want to do this eight to fifteen repetitions, two to three times a week. And our mind's falling asleep on us, but I think he has it. You're looking good. All right, slow control movements, everybody. And now it's your turn to get up and go. For your copy of the exercise booklet, please send one dollar for postage to Golden Opportunities, two three two four zero Chagrin Boulevard, Suite four fifty Beachwood, Ohio four four one two two. You've been in your home 20, 30, maybe 40 years or more, and now you want to or need to move on. There's a lot of life to pack up and move out. So where do you begin? Sharon Ward has boxed up, boxed up some information for us, and we're ready to unpack her advice. Sharon's the owner of North Coast Senior Moving. Thanks for joining us today, Sharon. Thank you, Armin. It's my pleasure. So making any move, it's always stressful, but when seniors are moving from a home that they've lived in forever, um, they face some special issues? They do, and what we've found, my husband and I own the company, and what we've put together is a business that helps the seniors and their families make those moves. Uh, what we find is many times seniors' moves are mitigated by health issues. Well, dealing with that is taking a lot of, you know, making a lot of stress and taking a lot of a toll on them. So then what we do is we work with the family, we help them through that process. And even at the point where a senior says, I can't stay in my home anymore, they make the decision on their own, we help them through that too. And, and you mentioned families a couple times. Families can actually physically help move uh, a person, can't they? Absolutely. We advise that families help. I think it, it makes the process a lot easier, although with some families, maybe not. <laughs> but I would say in general, it is always a good idea for everyone to be involved and be supportive. Now, one of the things is we work with seniors that have no children, that have no support system that way. That's where our company really steps up and helps. Because or children out of town, at, maybe. That's and that's thing. exactly what we find, especially in our transient society where children are out of the area and they are taking time off work and using vacation time and sick time to help a parent right, so, this. So we're downsizing. What's yes. the first step we need to do? One of the first things you want to look at is what type of housing or residence is going to be the best suited for the senior. Is it going to be independent? Are they going from a single family home maybe to an apartment or a retirement community? Is there some health issue that needs assisted living? And then sometimes it's even nursing homes. So making the right decision that way will help. And one of the questions related to that is how much space are you going to have and how much space do you need? Correct. And we do help people choose the things that would best fit those types of places, how much wall space and things like that. One of the things that we'll advise people is let's make a list of the things that you will need in your living space as opposed to what you want. Because a lot of times what they want is to take everything. Right. <coughs> Excuse of course, you me. always want to take everything. But you got a lot of stuff. What happens to the things that you can't take with you? Well, it's a lot of tough decision making, but what we do is we help ease the process by offering, first of all, to take a look at the family, see if there's legacy pieces that the children or someone that they care about would like. There's monetary and sentimental value to a lot of their things. 
then uh, whatever is left that they don't need and that they're not giving away, we will donate on their behalf, get mm -hmm. them receipts, and make that process a lot easier. Uh, how about a, a, a storage unit, using a storage unit? We don't always recommend storage units. Sometimes it's procrastinating the decision-making process, but yeah, there are times... that's what I do all the time, procrastinating. <laughs> You're not alone. We just worked with someone that had two storage units, and we've helped them clear through those. But a lot of times it is just kind of waiting. So we try to help them work through it so it's all settled. And this whole process moving, uh, how long does that take? It depends on the household. A lot of times, some of our seniors have already downsized when the children had left the home. So it, it can range anywhere from a, you know, a few days to a few months. Depends wow. on how much there is. After 40 years, there's a lot of accumulation. Well, Sharon, thanks for great advice. Appreciate that. Thank you. So sorting, cleaning, packing, it's a heavy burden. If you would like to unload the job on professionals, make the move. Call Sharon. Her number's next. To learn more, call North Coast Senior Moving at 440-344-0264 or log on to www.ncseniormoving.com. Next, watch out. The state may be coming after your assets. We're Gateway Title, keeping life simple. Can make it simple. We've got everything you need. See how easy selling your home can be. We're Gateway Title. We're keeping life simple. If you missed any phone numbers or websites from today's guests, get a pen and paper because we're going to list all that information again right now. And then I'll be back to uncover the facts about estate recovery. Medicaid's the key program to pay for long-term nursing home costs. In the past, we've spoken about how you can take steps to protect a portion of your life savings, but the state has just made it harder. My law partner, Lori Steiner, is here to help make the rules simpler to understand. Thanks for joining us, Lori. Glad to be here. First, give us a brief, expl brief explanation <laughs> of how Medicaid works. Okay. Medicaid will pay for nursing home costs, but only if you qualify, and that's not easy. If you're single, you only get to keep $1,500 of your life savings. If you're married, it's a little better. You get to keep the family house. That's protected. Plus, you get to um, have half of the rest of the assets up to about a little over $100,000. And what is a state recovery? Well, even though you might be able to keep your house and this $100,000 while you're alive, the state doesn't want you to be able to pass those assets on to your heirs at all. You know, they want to be able to get that. So they adopted something called a state recovery. And what that means is that when both spouses are gone, the state can come in and grab all those assets you might have left after having gotten Medicaid benefits to repay them for those fantastic benefits that you got. What's the general uh, activity when a person dies? Well, generally when a person dies, creditors have you know, a period of time, say a year, to, to make a claim against the estate. And that's worked out really well. You know, creditors have plenty of time to make the claim, to get paid, but the good thing is it puts an end date to the whole process so that the estate can be closed and the assets can be distributed out to the beneficiaries and they don't have to worry about you know, somebody, a creditor coming after them many years after the person died. Does that same rule apply to estate recovery? It used to, but not anymore. This is the harsh change that has happened now. The Ohio Supreme Court, so the top court in the state, has ruled recently that the state can come after your assets for this estate recovery um, either within one year of your death 
or within 90 days after the state receives a notice from the estate administrator that says you've died. So essentially what that means is the state could end up coming after the family many years after, after the fact. So, uh, for example, if the executor of the state doesn't realize that they're, you know, that they're supposed to tell Medicaid when, when a Medicaid recipient has died, um, and they go through the estate, they do all the things. Close it down, close think it down, everything is great. Distribute everything, and then five years later, Medicaid finds out that this person died they uh, can five years earlier. Now they can the come family. back. Yes, we've had it happen. Uh, but in the past, they were limited to a year. They were limited to when they could really come back. Uh, this is the state Supreme Court is saying the state has all of these rights to go forever almost. Is there any way uh, to avoid this from happening? Well, yeah, there can be planning that can be done. But the family, you really got to plan ahead. You got to think about these things possibly happening. Can't wait till after someone's passed away to then uh, say. Very difficult. And you really need to consult with an elder law attorney who deals with these kind of Medicaid issues and especially estate recovery, you know, all the time. You really need to keep up on what they're doing. Yeah, because it's always changing. It's always changing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Laurie. Very good information. So Medicaid is a key program. It's the only government program that will help pay long-term nursing home costs. But it is very complicated. And the obstacles, they keep growing. For more information, give Lori Steiner a call. Her number's up next. Call Butish, Solomon, Steiner, and Peck at 1-888-236-5173 for more information or log on to www.butishandsolomon.com. Thanks for joining us. On next week's show, we'll add up how the new state budget will harm aging Ohioans and their families. Then we'll check out what's booked at your local library Plus, tips for job hunting seniors and your teeth are aging right along with you. We'll brush up on what happens to our smiles as the years go by. Until next week, please remember to make the most of your golden opportunities. Would you like to join our kitchen conversation? All you have to do is call toll-free 1-877-765-1543 and leave us your question, name, and phone number. Or log on to www.golden.tv for all the latest information and show updates.